Hi, I'm Mahesh Thapa, and I am a pediatric radiologist at Seattle Children's Hospital. I am passionate about education, and I want to help you learn more pediatric radiology. I'll be showing you interesting cases, going over some fundamental concepts, and basically discussing everything pediatric radiology related. I want to do this in bite-sized pieces, however. You'll not see any 30-minute or one-hour lectures here. Instead, you'll see some micro lectures, maybe 5, 10, 12 minutes long, and I hope you get something out of it. So let's go on with our first case. This is a 12-year-old girl who came in with knee pain. We have four MR images for you. In the upper left-hand corner is a T2 fat-saturated sequence. You can just call this a fat-suppressed fluid-sensitive sequence that drives home the message of what we're looking at. Here we have a T1-weighted sequence. Here we have a dual echo steady state or DES sequence, which is a T2-weighted sequence that's gradient and acquired in very thin slices, typically 0 0.6, 0 0.7 millimeters. And because it's isovalumetrically acquired, we can reconstruct that at any plane that we want. In the lower right-hand side, we have another fat-suppressed fluid-sensitive sequence, this time in the sagittal plane. In the upper left-hand image, we see a nice image of the physis itself, which is right here, right? But this area of the physis is a little bit more difficult to see because it's thin and you have some surrounding hyperintensity or brightness, which is edema around the physis. It's focal and it's periphyseal. That same area on a T1 weighted sequence looks dark because what the fluid is doing now is replacing the fatty marrow, which is white. That's why this part appears dark on the T1-weighted sequence. And on this dual echo steady state, we see the nice bright physis quite well, except here we have a little tethering, don't we? We have a bone from the metaphysis coming in to attach to bone from the epiphysis with some surrounding edema. So what's happening? This physis is about to close. It's getting closer and closer together, and there are little spicules of bone coming down from the metaphysis, and there are some little spicules of bone coming up from the epiphysis. Well, at some point, one of those epiphysis if spicules and the metaphysial spicules, they're going to come and touch, and where they touch is where they're going to form this tiny bony bridge. It's not a pathological bony bridge. It just has to fuse somewhere. That's particularly where it happened to choose on this particular patient. When that happens, the micro movements that occur along the physis, because remember the physis is still quite fluid rich uh, and cartilaginous rich, so there's some micro movements there relative to uh, no movement along the bony aspects. That micro movement persists in the physis, but it doesn't happen where there's that little bony bridge. So it creates stress on either side of that little bony bridge. And that stress causes edema. And that edema and that stress can lead to pain. But the important thing to realize is that this pain will go away, it's transitory, uh, and once the fuses, uh, physis fuses, the pain will go away completely. So it's sort of a growing pain, if you will. Looking at the fat suppressed fluid sensitive sequence uh, in the lower right hand side, it just shows you another example of the physis beginning to close in this area with some periphyseal edema. This condition is known as FOP, focal periphyseal edema. And fundamentally, it is physiologic closing of the physis. It's not pathologic closing, okay? This is something that normally happens in kids. Happens typically in the teenage years, occurs frequently or as frequently in boys and in girls. The most common locations are the distal femur and the proximal tibia. And like I said, it can be painful, but it does resolve on its own. It doesn't need any further imaging, uh, and it may not even need any, any further clinical evaluation as long as the patient does better and the pain goes away. So this is called focal periphyseal edema. Here is a reference for you for you to look at. It's a very nice article on FOP. I'll also leave the link to it down in the description. Okay, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and come back and hopefully learn a little bit more about other aspects of pediatric radiology. Thank you.